All right, so we're live again, and my guest is joining me, as you could see there, President of Pengasan, who is Festus of CIFO. Welcome to you, comrade, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nancy. Uh, good morning, Nigerians. Uh, how good is the morning? Did you ah, see yeah. few kids when you were coming here? Ah, yes, yes, I did. I did. I, I did as I, was, um, as I was coming. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so uh, why are the f few kids still persisting? Of course, if you just take a look at it, you're seeing that not many filling stations are selling. What will come to your mind, perhaps the economics of it, is that, oh, PMS is scarce. Mm. So, filling stations are not getting supply. But in this case, I don't know if that is the problem. Ah. Is PMS scarce? Let me start no, from there. No, PMS okay. um, is the stock we have, um, as at last week, we have about two, 2 billion liters stock of PMS. So that shows clearly that there is PMS in country. Two billion liters stock of PMS translates to more than 30 days stock. So as it is, we have the stock of PMS. But the fundamental thing, uh, maybe I should take a little time to explain um, some of the things that happen in the value chain. Mm -hmm. You remember that we budgeted about 4 trillion naira as a country for uh, subsidy. For subsidy. When you are budgeting for subsidy or when you are bu budgeting the consumption and the supply of PMS, there are a lot of assumptions that goes into the, into the basket. For example, you look at what will be the average price of crude oil between January and December. So you look at the historical cost, then you use that to forecast. So you could use, say, between 80 to $90 per barrel. You also look, what is the bridging fund, the equalization cost? That is the cost of moving a liter of PMS per kilometer. That is the reason you are expected to sell PMS at the same price across the country. So that was also pegged at precisely 10 naira 46 cobble. Which so the president did some days ago. That uh, no, the it, no. The when they did budgeting, yes. it was 10 naira 46 cobble. But I will come to what the president did now. Did, yeah. So now, when in that cost at all, you also have the MPA cost, you have the Nimasa cost, you have the assumption of exchange rate the Naira dollar exchange rate. So all this goes into it. Then you also have the assumption of the equilibrium between demand and supply. So this go into that basket. So you will now determine what will be the landing cost of uh, PMS. You will also factor in the cost of shipping, that the, I mean, the, the freight cost. You factor in everything. You will now arrive at a particular value. When you arrive at a particular price, government will now say, okay, Let's assume that price is about 500 Naira. Government will now say, okay, I will take the other path so that the citizens can only pay 165. So as you progress into the year, because there are a lot of variables that contribute into that basket, whenever any of these variables changes, the entire equation will change. So what are the variables that has changed today? Mm -hmm. The basic variable that has changed today is actually the distribution cost, the equalization fund, or the bridging cost. That particular bridging cost, as of when it was agreed that, that it would be 10... Mean that bridging, sorry to cut you short, yeah. I want to get to that bridging yes. cost, is that, is that the transportation cost, the, that is location, taking it from location A to location B, is that the bridging cost? And yes, so now, 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 when you import PMS, it yeah. lands in Lagos. Yes. So you sell 165 in Lagos, right? Mm -hmm. Then you are now also expected to sell 165 in Medjugorje, mm -hmm. 165 in Yola. Mm -hmm. So now that cost of transporting the PMS between Lagos and Yola is part of what government will bear. It's part of the cost of subsidy. So now government has already forecast that it will be 10 naira 40, 10 naira 46 cobble. So that was imputed. But that calculation was done with the assumption of AGO at about 250 Naira maximum. That's for diesel. For, yes, for diesel. Mm. So as we now entered the, the year, you could agree with me that today AGO is over 800 Naira. So what that now means is that that 10 Naira 46 cobble was That's no longer table. sufficient. So now, gov that means the entire subsidy equation has changed. So government now, the discussion went on for over a month to now agree that, okay, government has agreed to add additional 10 Naira 
to the cost of that equalization, making it 20 now 20 naira 46, 46 cover. Which will still not cover the cost if you take No, it in. will, but to a large extent. Because it's like half of it, because if diesel is still selling for about 800 or 850. You are correct. And it, it was forecast or predicted or it was pegged Absolutely. at that point at 250. Absolutely. It's like it's, it's, it's tripled, tripled It's price. tripled, but we yes. are only doubling the, yes, the, 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 bridging, the bridging cost. cost yes. But the marketers, to a reasonable, uh, a reasonable extent, they said they are okay with this. They wanted more, but you know, paucity of fund mm -hmm. and all that. But with this, to, to a large extent, it's okay. But tomorrow, if the cost of diesel now moves beyond seven eight hundred we are still going to experience this again yeah. so it's a case of uh, deja vu so we are going to come back to the same matter. Uh, matter again tomorrow so that was one of the problem the second problem was also that the nmpc is the sole importer of this product the reason nmpc has become the sole importer of a product is because of the subsidy scam that we saw several years back. When did NMPC become so important? Yes, it was when? immediately after the Sarakis. You remember when the Saraki led committee? They did a probe in yes. the Senate then. I remember. And the Farouk Lawan. Yes. Aha, you know why I asked that, that question? Yes. Because of this same NMPC. Yes. In February, when the saga of dirty fuel came to being, mm. and NMPC came out to say, oh, there were some ah, petroleum okay. marketers no. that brought in fuel. Oh. Let me explain that to you. No, what happened there? No. NMPC, they are the ones that we source for the fuel. But in sourcing for the fuel, they will now reach out to, because they don't have vessels and all that, they will now contract the, 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 the process with which you bring this fuel into the country, they will give it to various marketers. So these various marketers and transporters and vessel owners, they are not the ones who will take their vessels to the various re refineries all over the world and transport this product to the country. So that is actually um, what NMPC was trying to explain as at then. They are the one who buy it, but they are not the one who transport it to the country at the end of the day. So, so now, when this product is But they are responsible for the refining, the, the, the process. No, 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 they are not responsible because the refineries are not owned by Nigeria. So the yes, refineries yes, are owned. It's just as if you are going to buy, you are going to buy uh, water. So yes. you go to the water processing plant. Yours so is to give pay you for the water. water. So you don't At the end of the day, yes. yes, you now. But again, do, that was also some failures in yes. inspection and quality control management. So now, what I was trying to explain earlier was that when they bring in these products in country, so they don't have depots everywhere. So you have private uh, depot, depot owners. So private, those private depot owners, they will take some of these PMS and they will now sell to retailers. So these private depot owners, they buy from NMPC at around four, one, 146 to 148 Naira. So they buy from NMPC. So they will take to their private depot. So for them, they are now supposed to sell at a margin of maybe one or two Naira. But as of today, they said the cost of doing business in, I mean, their own cost of doing business right. has increased. So they now increase their margin. So when they increase their margin, they were now selling at about 162, 163 Naira. So that now made a lot of retailers, they couldn't go and buy because you cannot buy at 162, 163, then you are expected to sell at the government approved price of 165. So these are the two basic uh, reasons why uh, the Lagos end happened last week, why in the hinterland you have a uh, fuel scarcity. But thank God that today, the, the money has been approved and it's been disbursed at the moment. So the truck owners, uh, the there is some respite and so called. Yes, the addition, that the additional ten are. Then for the other end of the marketers, we've also had uh, the depot owners. So we've had the NMDPRO. They've had meetings with them. They've discussed with them on how to ensure that the PMS is still sold at 165. But Nancy, you know that the four trillion we pay today uh, for subsidy. You know that majority of that money is we are subsidizing the entire West African sub-region. And you smuggling. also know, yes, true smuggling. And you also know as well that the trade union over the years, we have been advocating greatly that we should produce domestically. That if you don't produce locally, what is happening to diesel today would have been happening to PMS. Diesel today internationally, if you compare the 800 Naira plus that we buy diesel, so what is happening internationally, you may see that the countries that are producing diesel, it's relatively cheap. 
But, but for countries that, yeah. that, that, that don't produce diesel, you pay much more. But do you think mm. that even though we have refineries today that we refine our own fuel locally, mm. do you think that that problem will still go away? Vis-a-vis -vis mm. that this is a market too that also mirrors what happens internationally. Correct. I was speaking with my guest yesterday, Olumide Esonwo, is a partner, energy and resource lead at Deloitte. And he opened my eyes to this, and I asked him the same question, that mm. if we have refineries, don't you think that we won't be in this problem again? I said, no, Nancy, hold on. It may not necessarily be the Eldorado, because these are companies that operate also within the international environment. Everything is, in, is dollarized. Correct. So he, does that mean it's now the solution? I'm not saying we shouldn't have our refinery. We should, because we have the primary product, and it's, it's nonsensical, and it beats me that we don't have even are refineries that are, that can refine this as of now. Do I know that some things are happening in Port Harcourt? But what? How would you respond Let to that? Let me tell you some of the benefits of having a refinery. First of all, if we have a refinery, uh, we will not have issue of shortage of supply. Let me give you an instance. There okay. is a particular company that imports AGO into Nigeria. You know, AGO, AGO has been deregulated. Yeah, it's it has yes. been liberalized. Yeah. This particular company. In the contract they have with this Australian refiner, uh, Austria refinery, it was signed that if you breach this agreement, that you are going to pay us $2 million. But interestingly, what happened? They breached the agreement by supplying that product to the highest bidder, yeah. and at the end of the day, they were willing to refund $4 million to the company uh, because the company that came to buy was willing to buy at a much more higher premium. But if we produce locally, some of the things that will happen is that the supply will be guaranteed. W because just assuming our refineries are working, NMPC refineries are working, the first point of call is it's local. No, but NMPC refineries will not be working and will start exporting PMS abroad right. when we cannot do that in Nigeria. Then fundamentally, what will happen today? You see scarcity in FS. Today, you see the problem we are facing in FS. But if we were refining locally, one of the things that will also happen is that, to, okay, NMPC take crude oil abroad, what they call crude oil swap. They take it abroad, then at the end of the day, they will now bring in refined, uh, product. refined product. So that crude oil is sold at USD, you bring in the refined product, you don't sell at, at Naira. But if you were refining the product here, at the end of the day, the, once NMPC sell crude oil, what will now happen at the end of the day is that that money is going to go to the covers of CBN. And once it goes to the covers of CBN, our foreign exchange reserve will, will increase. increase. And once it increases, the value of our Naira will show up. So okay. there are attendant benefits. You can talk about the value chain, mm -hmm. the petrochemical industry, the fertilizer mm -hmm. industry, a lot of value okay. chains that will I come I, I understand that. Comrade, mm. we have about two minutes to the end. Mm. And let me juggle in all those questions quickly so that you can answer. How many liters of fuel do we consume daily? You said 2.2 billion liters a month in stock. That's one. Number two, the end. N NPDPRA, so many acronyms. How many person go, go carry for it? NMDPRA. <laughs> NMDPRA, yeah, that <laughs> midstream and downstream uh, regulatory authority, correct. says that 165 a liter must be sacrosanct. Yes. It must be sold. How yeah. realistic do you think that is? Then give me two other solutions apart from let's get our refineries to work that we can execute that we will not have this fuel scarcity, at least in a very long time. Yes, the only thing that can happen if we must maintain the 165 Naira per liter mm -hmm. is for government to be ready to increase the basket of subsidy. So okay. that, uh, yeah, if that basket of subsidy is increased, then you will not have problem relating to the PMS as of today. Okay, but what fine. we solve it finally, just mm -hmm. as you've said, mm -hmm. is by local refining. That is what will put this to rest permanently. But in the short run, Government must be ready because these variables are going to change. Okay. Tomorrow, if CBN devalues, then the variables will move. But again, there is a huge opportunity cost to the money we are using today to subsidize. Mm. And part of that opportunity cost, you know, a few days ago, I ran into a particular research that says that in, in um, Tanzania, they developed, they developed uh, um, a, a power generating unit from the Julius Inyeyere Dam project in Tanzania. The cost of developing it was about 2.9 uh, billion USD to generate 2,115 megawatts. megawatts. Now, if you consider 4 trillion as CBN rate, it's mm. approximately mm. 10 billion USD. Mm. 
So you could see the opportunity cost. Mm. That money could be deployed to into defense. Yeah. That money could be deployed into road maintenance yeah. and yeah. a lot of other things. But we are in this soup because of the insensitivity of government over the years. You don't answer that many million uh, Yes, million as, as, today, as today, as today is estimated, estimated, okay. look at my word, estimated mm -hmm. at about for uh, 56 million, million liters, liters per day, estimated. Okay, this estimate, 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 yes, we don't know. You will give us, NIPC will give us a different one. But let's see. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you program. so much. All right, I've been uh, speaking with the president of Pengerson, uh, Festus Osifo, and we've been talking about the perennial fuel scarcity in the country. Fella was the one that said suffering and smiling. I don't know why I'm in a singing mood uh -huh. today, <laughs> but <laughs> that's the way I feel. Be the best you can be and be the change that you want to see. I'll see you all again tomorrow, God willing. Bye now. I'm Nancy Naji. <laughs>